Hi Internet! Orcs speaking, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking all about how to record or live stream Wii footage directly from a actual console. First up, we need to talk about equipment because you will need to be buying a few things in order to make this entire thing work. The very first thing that you need to know is the Wii actually outputs in two separate quality signals, 480i and 480p. Now the standard cables that the Wii comes with, the red, white, and yellow cables, is only capable of outputting a 480i signal, which is the lower resolution of the two. In order to get a higher resolution 480p signal, you're going to need to buy some kind of an adapter, either a Wii to HDMI adapter or some kind of RGB converter. This is a Wii to HDMI adapter. It basically takes the output of the Wii, so you plug this into the back of the Wii, and then it gives you an HDMI signal, which you could send to another capture card. Speaking of which, capture cards. Now, depending on who you are, you actually might not want to spend that extra money to get a 480p signal. If you just want to capture and live stream Wii footage with no care about quality at all, I would recommend buying something like an HD PVR. Here's an example of what that footage looks like from one of my friends, this is about the quality that you could expect using an HD PVR. A solution like this should cost no more than about 40 bucks depending on where you live and you know what's going on with the pandemic. Alright now even though I showed this particular converter inside of the beginning of this video, I actually do not recommend buying a Wii to HDMI converter. I seriously recommend getting a Hyperkins Wii to HDMI cable instead because I have bought 12 of these. Different makes, different brands, Sewell adapters, black and white. I have not got a single one to work on me. I recommend buying a Hyperkins Wii to HDMI cable. Second off, you're also going to need to buy a capture card. Now the two most common capture cards that people recommend for the Wii is the Elgato HD60S and the Avermedia LGP Live Gamer Portable. The Avermedia non-inflated should be about 70 bucks and I got my Elgato HD60S for about 120 pre-COVID. Nowadays I believe the prices are a little bit higher so expect to spend somewhere in the ballpark of about 100 to 200 dollars if you're going with the higher quality option. All right, now that we've covered all the basic necessities, let's talk about your computer. You're going to need a somewhat decently powerful computer to run and capture said Wii footage. Now, anything decently made in the last couple years that's more than a couple hundred dollars should be good enough to run as long as it can run OBS. However, if you have some older equipment, make sure that your computer is capable of using OBS, either at 720 or 1080p. Oh, you guys thought I was kidding when I said I bought 12 of these things. Oh boy. All right, for this section, I think it would just be easier if I show you how to hook everything up. So this is my Power Wii. This is my my secondary Wii. My actual Wii is behind the computer, but it's a little hard to see, so we're not gonna be filming that. Also, this part was supposed to be on a tripod, but um, yeah. All right, let's first start with the adapter that the Wii actually normally comes with, which is the simple AV red, yellow, and white connectors. Now, this would just plug directly into the Easy Cap, and then the Easy Cap or the Dazzle or whatever the case might be plugs directly into your computer. Get it hooked up, run it with OBS, you're pretty much good to go. Now, the problem with these kind of capture cards is they don't have a pass through. So what that means is basically the feed that normally goes from your Wii to your TV, which would connect through here, is now being taken up by a capture card, which means the only way you're going to see your game is through a monitor running through OBS. And the problem with that is most, if not every capture card has a little bit of input delay, some more than others. And that means there's going to be a lot of delay if you plan to play off the OBS preview, which I do not recommend. So if you actually do plan to go this really cheap route, which is buying an easy cap, this one I remember getting for like five bucks, I recommend picking up one of these. This is basically an OCA splitter, so it's basically a splitter that allows you to get an extra input to run to your TV. So despite the mess that it looks like, this is actually the setup that I used to use back when I started originally streaming like two years ago. It actually works surprisingly well and it's surprisingly cheap if you know what you're looking for. I'm not sure if I said this already, but an easy cap or a dazzle should be no more than five bucks. An adapter like this should only be another five bucks. If you have a PVR, you're basically gonna do the exact same thing that I did with the easy cap. The only difference is the splitter is built into the capture cord. It costs a little bit more, but I seriously do recommend it. Right, next up, let's talk about these two things. Now these are basically a cam link and a off camera. I do not recommend these for capturing Wii footage because I am yet to find a good HDMI splitter. With those RCA cables, it's basically a copper wire that splits, so it's very basic. However, HDMI is a digital signal, so you need to have some kind of adapter, and I am yet to find a good one. You'll be playing with latency through OBS preview, and you'll just have a bad time. These are made for cameras, okay? I just wanted to say that I've seen some people use these for consoles, and it hurts to watch. Next up, let's talk about the Wii to HDMI adapters. Now, I did say I do not recommend these, however, people buy them anyway. So just for those of you guys who do, you just plug it into the back, of the Wii, it should snap in, and then this connects an HDMI signal over to a capture card. So you send the feed to the capture card, run it across here, and then you run another one as a pass-through. So this one is a Elgato HD60S, it has a pass-through, it'll go directly to your monitor, USB to computer. Now what I recommended, which is a Hyperkins Wii to HDMI cable, it's actually a lot more straightforward, you just plug this end, 
into the Wii. You plug this end into, I can't do it with one hand, plug it into the capture cord. And then you just plug that little adapter into your computer and you're good to go. I've seen some people ask questions about these. This is an AV to HDMI. So basically it takes the AV signal and it outputs it into HDMI. So I could basically use the original adapter instead of this. And people have asked me before, is this thing worth it? The answer to that, at least for this situation is no. It's never worth it to buy this because you gotta remember when you go from AV, the Wii can only output at 480i. So even though you convert it to HDMI, you're still only getting a 480i signal. So the quality is not gonna look any better. You just end up with this ridiculous thing in the middle of your process signal and it's, it's just annoying. Get, get a Hyperkins if you're going HDMI. Also one final thing, this is a little bit more of an advanced thing. However, it's something that I actually need and use all the time. This is an HDMI audio extractor. It doesn't say that, it says HDMI converter. This is an audio extractor. So it basically intercepts this cable and then it will send an audio signal out to a mixer so I can listen to it separately. This one is actually dead. I have another one in the back that I'm using currently for my Wii streams and stuff. Again, this is a little bit more advanced, but as someone who actually has a mixer, it is a super nice advantage to have to be able to split that audio signal. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump back to the computer and figure all that out. By the way, I know this is not OBS. That's because I'm actually using OBS to record right now. This is Streamlabs OBS, which is basically a skin on top of OBS. It's the same thing, just has a skin over it. And some of the buttons are put a little bit different locations. So the button down here where it says settings is moved down to the bottom right corner right there. So just keep that in mind. I don't actually own a PVR. For this example, we'll be using my Elgato HD60S. However, I do know Elgato and Ava Media, you have to download their drivers from their website before you could start using them. So depending on which capture card you get, be sure to download the drivers and make sure that they actually work. Now inside of OBS, the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that everything is set up properly. So go to video, set your base canvas to whatever your monitor is actually set to. So since I'm using 1920 by 1080, leave that as default. And then in the output scaled resolution, you could change that down to 720 if your computer is not powerful enough to handle that. FPS values, I would recommend 60 if you can, but 30 if you can't. We'll be coming back to this in a bit. For now, we actually want to add our capture card first. Go to sources and then add your capture card on the video capture device. You can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Elgato HD. Yes. And then under the device drop down, you're going to look for your capture card. Now I happen to know that my capture card is called Game Capture HD60S. Here it is right here. Let me turn on my Wii so you actually get something to look at. If you still get a black screen at this stage, by the way, go under device default and change it to custom and then change the resolution manually to 1920 by 1080 or 720 or whatever the resolution that you need. You could also change the FPS as well to make sure that everything is working properly. I recommend leaving everything else default, at least for me. And you also notice down here, you're gonna get another audio signal channel, which you can manually control to adjust the volume as you go. All right, let me grab a Wii remote real quick to show you. But under the Wii settings, go inside of Wii settings and then go under, I believe it's display? No, it's screen, screen, TV resolution, and then change it from 480i to 480p. All right, now let's actually start messing around with some filters. The first thing that you may notice is that there is a pretty nasty black border around the Wii footage. This is actually normal on every capture card. So what we're going to do is we're gonna right click on our Elgato HD60S and then go to the filters. Under filters, we're going to add a few things. The first thing that we're going to add is a crop filter. So go look for the crop filter, done. And then be sure to use this preview here. Don't use the background, use this preview. And then be sure to leave it relative. You're going to scroll up until you cut all the black out. You're going to have to eyeball this a little bit. It might take a little bit. And if you feel like you're cutting a little bit too much, then you tone it back down. Take your time. I've done this like a million times, so I could do it pretty quick. But for you, it might take a little bit longer. Next thing you're going to add now, go back, add another filter, and you're going to add a scaling slash aspect ratio right here. Scaling slash aspect ratio. Make sure that you do this in order, by the way, the crop should be on top of the scaling. Next, you're going to go to the scale. I like using area. These are basically different algorithms for how the scaling is done. Be sure not to use point. Point is for things like old NES games. It'll make everything look really blocky. So be sure to not use point. And we're going to change it to 1920 by 1080. And as you can see, it scales it up to 1920 by 1080. Looking fine there. All right, the last two settings that we're going to add is a sharpen filter. As expected, this is a sharpen filter. I do not recommend using anything more than point 0.1 around there, don't go crazy with this. You might think this is one of those things that if you crank it up in the beginning, it might look good. And then you're gonna go to bed, wake up, and you're gonna realize it's too much. Don't go crazy with the sharpen. And then next, you're going to add a color correction. This color correction thing is optional. Some people like to have a little bit more saturation inside of their feet. That's obviously too much, but you get the idea. Again, don't go crazy with this. And you could also add a little bit of contrast. And then you click the eye like see the difference. It makes it pop a little bit more. Personally speaking, I don't actually use a color correction. So this is just in case your footage looks a little bit off. All right, now the last thing that we need to do, which is make sure that the footage will come out at a high enough bit rate. So what do I mean by that? Let's go into settings and then under video, 
not video, on the output, you're gonna have to, you're gonna change this from simple to advanced. So change it to advanced and then go over to recording or streaming, depending on which one you want to do. Now over for recording, you could change the path, which is where the output is going to be on your computer. You could change the format. I recommend MP4, or if your computer has a tendency to crash or you're doing a very sensitive session, you could do MKV as well. That way, in case of the recording crashes halfway, you still have all that backed up. I recommend watching Epoch's Vox if you want a little bit more tips on advanced OBS things. He's very helpful for that. Next, we're gonna scroll down all the way down to where it says bitrate. Now this bitrate is very important. Bitrate is the amount of quality inside of a video recording. So for instance, if you have a too high resolution, but not enough bitrate, it'll look very blocky and look very, very bad. So you want to make sure that the bitrate is always high enough to match your video footage that you're actually recording. For Mario Kart Wii, I record at around 10K. However, if your computer is not capable of handling 10K, you could drop it down to 6K. And if you have to go any lower than 6K, I would recommend dropping the resolution from 1080 60 down to like 720 or something like that. Again, if you want to know more about like the conversion rates, Epox Vox, I'll be sure to link somewhere in the video description, a video about how to match resolution and FPS to bitrate. And with that, you should pretty much be done. Once you hit record, you're off to the races. You can start recording at any time. Hopefully your recordings come out good. And I'm looking forward to seeing higher quality streams and videos from the Wii community. If this video was helpful, be sure to do all of the YouTube stuff on your way out. This was Ark, and I will see you all.